All right, welcome to my first free lesson of the year. Welcome, my name is Kalani. Just in case you don't know, they usually call me Mr. X and I'll be doing these particular free lessons here and there sporadically, just to help you guys as you prepare for your final exam, which is coming either in June for some of you or in November for most of you. And I wish you all the best. I wanna do, deal with uh, mathematics today and we're going to be dealing with exponents, just exponents. That's what we're gonna be dealing with. And I'm gonna share something on the screen here. You should be able to see it. I start teaching. If you have a question or whatsoever, you just lift up your hand through the platform. I'll be able to help you. But otherwise, get your books, your pens, your whatever's ready, and let's start to learn. All right. So when you speak about exponents in mathematics, um, basically an exponent is a mathematical expression which is shown by this following situation. So when you're writing an exponent, you just simply say a to the power n. Now a, a, this one stands uh, for the base. So whatever the value of a is, it stands for the base. And then the n here, you can call it the power or you can call it the exponent. So the expression a to the power n simple tells me about a typical uh, exponent uh, and a being the base and n being the power, or you can just call it the exponent. The way maths deals with exponents is pretty much very different from your normal addition, subtraction, and uh, division. For an example, I have a rule or we have rules here that we need to deal with one by one and I'll go through them very quickly. And then we can go do many, many questions that will help us apply these rules and the definitions as well. The first one, if I say to you a to the power m multiplied by a to the power n, notice that the bases are the same. That's a and a to the power m and to the power n. All that is equal to a to the power m plus n. So here's what I'm learning. I'm learning that when exponents of the same base multiply, then their powers, they add. Let me say that again. I'm learning that when exponents of the same base multiply, then their powers, they add. So a to the power m dot a to the power n simple means a to the power m plus n. We go down to the next one. So this was our first law of exponents. There's another one. What's happening when the exponents are dividing? The same base a to the power m, the other base a to the power n, same base, but this time they are dividing. What it simple means therefore is that the top power m will subtract the bottom power or will subtract it from the bottom power n. In other words, a, to the power m minus n. We'll be using this right now as we go through questions. So here's what I'm learning. I'm learning that when it comes to exponents and they have the same base and they are dividing, then top power minus bottom power at the end of the day, a to the power m minus n. Further on, there is another law. This law says a to the power m to the power n. A to the power m to the power n. That simple means it's a to the power m times n. That's all. So for an example, if someone says two to the power three to the power two, it's simple two to the power three times two, which is like two to the power six, that's all. In other words, you don't say two to the power three to the power two, uh, and then you start squaring this three, you don't. Actually, you multiply three times two, it's not three squared, no. It's three times two, that's another rule. Check this out here, a, b to the power m, right? So how do we deal with this? We're gonna do a question like this right now. a to the power m, I see that, and b to the power m. I'm learning that if the power is m, then it powers both a as well as b, hence we've got a to the power m, then b, also to the power m. Here's another useful one here. A over B to the power m means this guy, A is gonna be powered 
by M. B, similarly, is going to be powered by M. So it's important to know the rules because once we know the rules, we can then be able to use them effectively. Now, apart from the rules that we have or the laws of exponents, we also have other definitions that we need to know as we're doing these questions. We hear that a to the power zero is one. A can be any number. Two to the power zero is one. A can be any number. 10 to the power zero is one. 1,000 to the power zero is one. One million to the power zero is one. In other words, in math, we learn that anything to the power of zero gives me one. Anything to the power of zero gives me one. That's the definition. Further on, one to the power of A is one. A can be anything. One to the power of any number is one, right? For an example, if I say one to the power of, of, of 100, that's one. One to the power of 200, that's one. One to the power of whatever, that's one. One to the power of any number except zero, okay? Except zero, definitely is going to be one right there. Perfect. Now, I go to the next one. X to the power of negative N can be written as one over X to the power of N. Notice that the power here is negative. But when you say one over, then it becomes X to the power N, it becomes a positive exponent there from being negative to being positive. So somebody says two to the power negative three is rewritable as one over two to the power of three, which then can be written as one over eight because two to the power of three is eight. Further on, you can play around with this. One over X to the power of negative N can be written as X to the power of N. So it's just a matter of knowing the definitions and then being able to apply them as it were. So one over X to the power of negative N is equal to X to the power of N. Further on, we've got here a situation, root of A to the power M, and then there's N there, like some small N that's somewhere there. All right, so this simple means A to the power of M, I usually say inside power, which is M, over the outside power, which is N. So it's gonna be A, then M over N. That becomes what uh, the, the definition tells us at the end of the day. Now, we're going to use these definitions, we're gonna use these laws to be able to do a couple of questions together. Let's start off with a simple one. I'm gonna do about 12 questions, this one being my first one. So this one says three dot, three to the power X dot three to the power X plus one is equal to 27. And we're supposed to solve for X in all the things that we do, we're supposed to solve for X. All right. Now the bases are the same. I see a three, I see a three, and they are multiplying. So what do I know? I was told that if the bases are the same and they are exponents are multiplying, then the powers they add. In other words, this can be written as three, then X plus X plus one, is equal to 27 to the power of X. This is now written as three, then two X plus one is equal to 27 to the power of X. We'll take it slowly. So how do I solve this now? Understand that 27 can be written to a base of three. 27 can be written to a base of three. So if you take your cast your calculator, if you do have one, you just simply say 27, all right? Then you say equal to, let's take a step by step, 27 equal to, then you press shift, shift. Then there is a button there, written fact. It's got like some semicolons, quite a lot of them. Just next to the, um, on the right, on the left-hand side of the button, hype, H-Y-P. There's a button with comma, comma, commas. Press on that one, guess what you get? Three to the power of three. So I've changed 27 to the base of three and now it is three to the power of three. Now I noticed something here, this particular situation. There was one law where I learned that if I've got A to the power of M to the power of N, 
I can write it as a to the power of m times n, m n. It means here, this is three to the power of three to the power of x can be written as three to the power of three x. Then I've got three here on the left-hand side, two x plus one, okay? Bases are the same, all right? What do I do? Drop the powers. Once the bases are the same right here, and you are equating, drop the powers, we are solving for x. We do the math. That's 3x there. I can take 2x to the other side. One remains. So one is equal to x, or as we usually write it, x is equal to one. So I'm going to start small, start on very simple questions. Then from there on, I want to be able to pull through and give over some difficult questions. So that's our first one. We are applying the rules. We are applying the laws. We are learning as it were. All right, let's keep going on that one. So maybe you can write this down somewhere. Again, if you have any question whatsoever, you just lift up your hand through the platform, then I can be able to unmute you, and then we can start from there on, right? Let's pull through on that. Okay. All right, I'm ready. I'd like to go to my next one right there. Okay. All right. Let's try our next one. Let's give it up a notch higher, right? Let's give it up a notch higher. Here's a question. Now, notice that all my questions are taken from uh, past exam papers. Um, so the, the more you do, the more you know, the less you do, the less you know. So here's a typical question here. It says two to the power of zero plus two, then X to the power of X minus two, plus two to the power of X plus one, plus two to the power of X. Perfect. And we're supposed to solve for X. First thing, two to the power of zero. I remember a definition. It said anything to the power of zero is one. So where there's two to the power of zero, I'm going to put one plus. Now notice this part, okay? So it's written two to the power X minus two. I can break it down to two to the power X multiplied by two to the power negative two. That's me using the laws. I can break two to the power X minus two to two to the power X dot two to the power negative two. Very important to remember that. In fact, you can always go backwards. Say, say I started off with this particular part. You can always say two to the power X plus, remember the bases are, uh, are the same and the exponents are multiplying. So this becomes two to the power X plus negative two, which becomes two to the power X minus two. So that's basically how you can write it. So I'm breaking this down. I'd like to solve for X. Two to the power of zero is okay for one. I'm breaking these guys down. Two to the power X dot two to the power negative two. I can break this one again. Then it becomes two to the power X dot two to the power one. I'm breaking it down. And then plus two to the power X. All this is equal to 53. All right, perfect. I'm good to go. Let me see what I can do in math. Always in math, try to look for relationships. Try to look for things that are alike, like terms and so forth and so on. Okay, so I see a one on the left-hand side and I can take it to the right-hand side, 53 minus one, I get a 52. Then now I'm left with uh, two to the power X dot two to the power negative two plus two to the power X dot two to the power one plus two to the power X. I noticed something interesting. There is a two to the power X there, a two to the power X there, and another two to the power X. In other words, two to the power X is common and I can factor it out. There it goes, two to the power X gone. What am I left with? I'm left with two to the power negative two. So I've taken from this guy, two to the power X, and I'm left with two to the power negative two, plus two to the power X gone here, two to the power one. And then here, two to the power X gone plus one, all this is equal to 52. Let's do some math. Two to the power X, if you put this in the calculator, 
2 to the power negative 2 plus 2 to the power 1, which is 2, by the way, plus 1, you get a number like 13 over 4. All this is equal to 52. That's what you get. So 2 to the power negative 2 plus 2 to the power 1 plus 1 is equal to 13 over 4. I'm looking for x. Matt says to me, let's get rid of 13 over 4. So I can divide both sides by 13 over 4. In other words, if I divide this side by 13 over 4, I'm left with 2 to the power x. If I divide 52 by 13 over 4, I'm left with 16. You can try it. You'll get it. 2 to the power x is equal to 16. Then further on, this becomes 2 to the power x is equal to 2 to the power of 4. How do I know that? I'm changing 16 to the base of 2. 16, one more time, equal shift, comma, 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 2 to the power of 4. Bases are the same. Drop the powers. x becomes equal to 4. I have solved for x. Somebody had their hand up. I don't see it anymore. Uh, let me try and look for it. Yes. Go ahead. I'm going to ask to unmute you. Go ahead and ask me the question. Hi, sir. Hi, what's up? Um, please explain to me again how we got 13 over 4. How I got? 13 over 4. Okay, you want me to explain how I got 13 over 4? Not a problem. Yes, sir. So if you look at this part Thanks. here, where I said, okay, I'm going to mute you. So guys, after asking a question, you can always mute yourself uh, back then. Thank you so much for that question. 2 to the power of negative 2 plus 2 plus 1 gives you 13 over 4. It's just a matter of putting it in the calculator. 2 to the power of negative 2 again plus 2 plus 1 gives me 13 over 4. That's how I got it. And then now I divide both sides again by 13 over 4. And then I end up getting 52 over 13 over 4, 16. Changing 16 to a base of 2 to the power of 4, then that becomes x is equal to 4 at the end of the day. So I, uh, that's how I, I, I pull through and I, I get it. All right. Let's pull through on that one. Let's pull through. All right. Thank you for the questions. I want to go to my next one. Let's take it a notch higher. Let's take it a notch higher. Let's pull through and uh, take it somewhere a bit more difficult. Let's get to something more interesting than what we're doing. All right. So let me try another question right there. Again, this is a 2015 uh, Gauteng prelim paper one, question 1.3, 1.13 rather. 12 to the power 2x is equal to uh, 8 and then uh, dot uh, 36 to the power of x. Four marks, we need to solve for x. As is always, and I'll say this over and over again, as is always, when you're doing math, look for relationships. Look at a question, see how you can break it down for yourself. What do I have? What can I use? How are the numbers related? Can I make a relationship between the numbers on the left and the numbers on the right? And what laws can I use? On the left-hand side, I have 12 to the power 2x. Let me write it like that. 12 to the power 2x. On the right-hand side, I have got 8.36 to the power of x. So let me write my 8 there. But here's something about 36. I'm looking for relationships. 36 can be written as 12 times 3. And on the left-hand side, I do have a 12. And 36 can be written as 12 multiplied by 3 to the power of x. I learned something earlier on. There was a rule that says A, B to the power of M means A to the power of M dot B to the power of M. I'm looking for relationships. Then I can say to myself, okay, 12 to the power of 2X can then further on be eight. Okay, 12 to the power of X using this particular rule multiplied by three to the power of X as it were right here. So I see that. 
12 on the left hand side to the power 2x and 12 to the power 2x on the right hand side. It's possible to divide everything by 12 to the power of x. So I can say this 12 to the power of 2x, okay, over 12 to the power of x. Then I will be left with 8.3 to the power of x. I'm trying to gather the guys that look alike together 12 to the power 2x over. 12 to the power of x. I learned a law. The law that I learned earlier on in line with this part here says to me a to the power of m over a to the power of n, rewritable as a to the power of m minus n, top power minus bottom power. So here I am. This can be written as 12 to the power of x. How? 2x minus x is x. Okay, relationships, that's what I'm looking for. All right, 12 to the power of X is now equal to 8.3 to the power of X. 12, 12, how can I break it down? There's a three on the right-hand side. 12, how can I break it down? I can, can be four multiplied by three, there we are, to the power of X is equal to 8.3 to the power of X. This guy here can be rewritten as four to the power of X dot three to the power of X is equal to eight dot three to the power of X. We're almost there towards the end right here. Bring it here. On the left-hand side, three to the power of X. On the right-hand side, three to the power of X. I can divide both sides by three to the power of X and then they'll be gone. Or you can simply say uh, the three to the power of X they cancel each other out. It's there on the left, it's there on the right. So let me do it old school. So I can say divide both sides by three to the power X, there we go. And then eight dot three to the power X also over three to the power X. And mathematically, these are the same, gone, gone. Now I'm left with eight, gone. Okay, this is to the power X there, gone, gone. So this is now four to the power X is equal to eight. Hmm. Four, eight, four, eight. Well, these guys have a common base two. Two to the power two, to the power x, two to the power three, right there. Two to the power two x is equal to two to the power of three. Bases are the same, we're almost there. Then drop the powers. Two x is equal to three. X at the end of the day is three over two. After dropping the powers. Again, look at where we started, family. We started off from here. What did we look for? Relationships, 12. On the right-hand side, it was 36. Now it is 12 times three. There's a relationship in all of this. And that's very important to remember and to pull through on that particular level. So that becomes your answer. You can write it down or you can ask me as many questions as you possibly can. Please do not be afraid. You just lift up your hand. It will help others much as it will help me to know what you guys are struggling with and to help you so that you can pass and get yourself a distinction. So we started small. We're just upping the game. We're going further and further onto all of this. I want to go to my next question, which is a bit more challenging than the previous one. Well, going up and up just to make sure that we're pulling through on that level. Somebody raise their hand and I'd like to deal with that. Go ahead, you are unmuted. All right, I've unmuted you. Um, I'm not so sure if you can hear me, but you are unmuted. Yes. Sir? Yes. Just wanted to ask, why didn't you break 36 as two squared multiplied by squared. Okay, good question. You can do that. In fact, thank you for that question because I was going to say something that to the effect that there's so many ways of solving this, so many ways of doing this. So you can do it the way that you pulled across as long as you're consistent with the mathematics, you are okay. So uh, it doesn't really matter how you did it. If you look at even the memo itself, they do it totally different maybe from what I'm doing right here. But at the end of the day, as long as the mathematics is correct, just like I did, it's fine. So you'll notice this in math, um, that there's so many ways 
of doing the same things. Notice this in this topic. You notice this in trigonometry. You notice this in analytical geometry. So, so many ways of doing this and you can learn whichever way. So that's fine. You can do it as long as you're consistent. Because I'm pressed for time, I'm unable to show you all the methods. So I'll show you one which I think is pretty easy and understandable. There was a 12 on the left, a 12 on the right. For me, it was easier to actually use that one. All right, let's go further, family. Thank you for those beautiful questions. I wanna go further. Here's an interesting question. It's a 2014 March paper, uh, question 1.13, and I want us to do it together. Here we go. It says to us here, nine dot two to the power of X, all right, is equal to two dot three to the power of X. Listen to this one, it gets interesting. Okay, relationships again. I'm able, I am able to change nine to a base of three. Let me do that. It becomes a, a three a squared dot two to the power of X minus one is equal to two dot three to the power of X. Now, noticing that I've got a base of three and a base of two, I can't really add these particular powers because from what I'm looking at, the bases are not the same. I can't. Okay, so let's see what else I can do. On the left-hand side, three to the power uh, of two. On the right-hand side, I've got three to the power of X. Then I've got two to the power of X minus one on the left and also a two on the right-hand side. Okay, let me bring these twos and threes on their own, okay? Let these guys who look familiar go together. So in this case, yeah, I can divide both sides by two uh, and then I will have it as three to the power of two, then two to the power of X minus one, all this over two is now equal to three to the power of X. I still want three to be on the other side. So I can divide again, both sides by three to the power of two, divide the sides by three to the power of two, much as this side. So now I'm left with two to the power of X minus one over two, is now equal to three to the power of X over three to the power of two. All right, gets interesting. Okay, the bases at the bottom and top are the same on the left-hand side. Bottom and top are the same on the right-hand side. I learned a law. It says, okay, subtract top power minus bottom power. So this becomes two to the power X minus one minus one. Notice that the power of two, of two is one. So it's gonna be top power X minus one minus one is equal to on the right hand side, three, then X two uh, to the power X minus two. So three to the power X minus two. This leaves me here, two, then X minus two is equal to three to the power of X minus two. Okay, then what? I'm solving for X again. The bases are not the same. I can't drop the powers. The bases are not the same. It's impossible for me to drop the powers. So what can I do in this particular sense? Check this out. It's possible to divide both sides by three to the power X minus two. Now the question is, why would I do that? Let me show you. So what am I saying? Two uh, to the power X minus two over three to the power X minus two is equal to one. I've divided both sides by three to the power X minus two. There was a law or a definition that I learned. I was told that A over B to the power of M, all right, I see your hands, I'm coming up, can be written as A to the power of M over B to the power of M. That's what I was told. Okay, so look at this part. Two, x to the, to the power of x minus two over three to the power of x minus two is equal to one. Fine. What does that mean? I can write it as two over three. All right, all right. To the power of x minus two is equal to one. I can write it that way. But how does it even help me to find x? Here's where math gets interesting. I was told under the definition that a to the power of zero is one. In other words, any number to the power of zero 
is one. So I'm gonna manipulate math. Any number, any number to the power of zero is one. Check what I've just done right there. Okay, let me put my zero. I've just simple converted U1 to two over three to the power of zero. That's what I've done. Now the bases on the left and the right are the same. I manipulated mathematics. Bases are the same. Drop the powers. X minus two is equal to zero. X is equal to two. See the hands? Let's get busy. I wanna go back to the question. Let me start off uh, with the person, the person I'm going to unmute. Go ahead, you're unmuted. Hi, sir. Hi. Um, can you please explain the, the first step when you divide? I don't understand what's going on. Okay. So the first step, I think this should be from there. Uh, when I divide both sides, by um, I think two. So I've divided the right-hand side here by two. I'm left with three to the power X and I can divide, let me just put a, a, a line here. I can divide the left-hand side also by two. That's also very possible. So all I'm trying to do is to try to get the twos on their own and also the threes on their own, just, just so that I can have things that look alike on one side. So if they are there on one side, I can be able to play around with some mathematics to that particular effect. So that's what I'm trying to do in this case as each way. So, so, so as it stands here, now I've got uh, three to the power two on the left-hand side, dot two to the power X minus one over two. It's got a three to the power X. Let me try to come to the stage just in case you're confused any further. Right, now I want to get rid of this guy, three to the power two. Again, I divide both sides by three to the power two. And so now it's three to, over, to the power X over three to the power two, much as this whole side here is divided by three to the power of two. And when that happens, you're only left with two to the power X minus one over two to the power one, which is like two in essence. So I've grouped my twos and my threes on their own right there. Okay, I'm hoping that I'm making some sense. Uh, you can talk to me, you're still unmuted, go ahead. Yes, I do understand, you can go further. All right, thank you so much. Somebody's got a hand up, I'm gonna to attend to the next person, go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Hi. From the last one, the, on the first side, the read, the last line. You mean the last one as in this one here? Before you divided it by three to the power of x minus two on both sides. Okay, here, right here. Yes, yes, so you can make it one. Yes. So, yeah, that's where I want to understand, like. All right, let me explain further. Time, yeah. It's okay, don't worry, I got your back. All right, I'll explain this on, on to, for everyone again. Um, basically speaking, you, you are here and, and you look stuck. And I think that's the word that you guys love to use. Yo, I'm so stuck. Oh, you're, you're not. Play around with math. Manipulate mathematics. Base is two, base is three. Let me, I want to leave one on the right-hand side. And you know why? Why I want to have one on the right-hand side? It's because I can, anything to the power of zero is one. So, so once I've got one on the right-hand side, I can come up with any base, as long as it's to the power of zero, I'm okay. So I want one on the right-hand side so that I can come up with any base. As long as it is to the power of zero, then it's fine. It will always be equal to one. I want my right-hand side to have one. So that's why I'm dividing both sides on the left and the right by three to the power X minus two. That's why I'm doing it. And then so, so on the right-hand side, I'll end up having one. Why do I insist on having one? Because it's manipulatable, if there's a word like that, it can be manipulated to any base as long as the power is zero, it will always give me one. So here in this case, I've got two over three to the power of zero. At the end of the day, it will give me one. 
And so once the bases are the same, drop the powers, then now X becomes equal to two in that aspect right there. So again, guys, with math, the more you do it, the more you know it. And that's when you start seeing uh, relationships really fast. You know, you start trying, okay, what if I do this? Do I get a one? Oh, I got a one, but one is, is any number to the power of zero. And I mean, on the left-hand side, I got a base of two over three. On the right-hand side, I've got one, but one can be changed to two over three to the power of zero as it were, and you end up getting your answer from that perspective. All right, guys, thank you so much for the questions. Um, I'd like to move further and do another hot question as we are lining up to know more and more about this situation. Again, for me, what's important is to manipulate, to remember the rules, to try to bring the guys that look alike, things uh, with the same basis together, and you'll be able to pull through from that particular level. Let's try another one, Let's try another question together. Let's try another one. All right, here's a question that we can try. It's from 2015 Metro East, it's a June paper. And all these are past exam papers, just to make sure that you guys get and understand what's going on. Okay, 2.3 to the power of x plus three to the power of x over two is equal to seven and a half. All right, let's try to change things that we can change. First up, I think I can change seven and a half to 15 over two. Yo, how did I get that? Seven and a half. Well, from grade five, <laughs> seven times two, 14, 14 plus one, 15, 15 over two. Yes, that's it. I've changed it. On the left-hand side, there, 2.3 to the power X plus uh, three to the power X over two. Now, in math, in mathematics, can me write it properly? In mathematics, when you've got a denominator, get rid of it. When you have a denominator, get rid of it. The sooner you do, the better for you. What's happening? Two is my denominator. There's another two. So cross multiply every entity by two. So I can say now two is multiplying 2.3 to the power of X plus uh, three to the power of X over two, again, multiplied by two. Everyone is being multiplied by two, cross multiply, get rid of the denominator. Now I'm left with two bracket 2.3 to the power of X plus uh, three to the power of X is equal to 15. Denominators gone. Let's do some math. So two multiplied by 2.3 to the power of X. What do I have at the end of the day? I'll have two to the power of two dot three to the power of X plus three to the power of X is equal to 15. Now, let me say something. I see your hands, I'm coming through. Let me say something. There's a difference between me saying, check this out, between me saying two, then two plus three to the power X and me saying this. There's a total big difference. In the first example, two will multiply two and two will multiply three to the power of X. In this one, two only multiplies the two. Simple, it's like two times two times three to the power of X. That's, what, how, you, that's how you see it. It's two times two times three to the power of X. Two times two, that's two squared, which is four eventually, three to the power of X. So there's a difference between this and that. Do not make that mistake. So in this case now, I've got two to the power of two, which can be written as four right there. Then three to the power of X plus three to the power of X is equal to 15. We're almost there. We are almost there. Three to the power of X is common on the left-hand side. I'm left with four plus one right there is equal to 15. We do some simple math. Four plus one, that gives me five. Let me write it as five nicely there. So that's a five there is equal to 15. Divide both sides by five. You're trying to solve for X. Don't forget that three to the power of X is equal to three. Lovely. Bases are the same. Drop. Drop the powers. 
Three is like three to the power of one. So eventually X becomes equal to one like that. All right, let me just answer a couple of questions that people might be having. I'll help you out. You're unmuted, go ahead. Hi, sir, can you hear me? Um, I think you're pretty low. Um, maybe you can just get close to the device. I should be able to uh, hear you if you do that. Hello, can you hear me now? Loud and clear, sir. All right, uh, so on the first step, you said seven to one over two is 15 over two. Yes. Isn't it a seven over two? Can you quickly explain that part? Okay, no problem. All right, let me just put a box here to explain everything. All right, so seven over two, right? You asked me about that. And then there's yep. seven and a half, All right? Seven over two is different. Seven over two is actually three and a half. And then seven over seven and a half, seven and a half is actually 15 over two. Let me show you where this comes from. In maths, two times three gives you six. Then you say, okay, that's six plus one. That's now seven over the two. That's what you do. If you were to punch in seven over two in your calculator, it'll give you 3,5 when you're changing it into decimals. This seven and a half is 7,5. And 7,5 is actually 15 over two. If you were to say 15 divided by two, you'd get 7.5 or seven oh. and a half. So that's yeah. how it is. So it's seven and a half is not seven over two. No, no, no. Again, family, it's seven times two, 14 plus one, 15. So the, the numerator becomes 15. The denominator still remains as two, just like that. I'm hoping right, that I'm perfect. making sense, my man. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right, I've got two more hands. Let me just unmute as we go on along. Yes, please. Go ahead, you are unmuted. Okay. I'm not so sure what's going on. Uh, maybe you can't hear me. Let me try the next person. I'll come back to you if you're not uh, pulling through. The next person, go ahead. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Can you please explain step four from step four, uh, step three? Um, step four, and, let oh, me see. Which one? Uh, the one, how do we come about the two to the power two times three to the power x plus three to the power x equals okay, to 50. Okay, this part here. Okay, let me go through it. No problem. From basics, from, from fundamentals. Um, it, it, again, family, in maths, when you've got a denominator, please get rid of it. Please get rid of it. How do I get rid of the denominator? Luckily for us here, we had the same denominator, which is two, and the other one is two. So let me just cross multiply everything by two. Let me do that. So I'm going to cross multiply this guy by two, cross multiply this guy by two, cross multiply this guy by two, which is what I actually did here. So that's why this two is now multiplying this, because I'm getting rid of the denominator. The same two is multiplying this. I wanna get rid of the denominator. The same two is multiplying this. I'd like to get rid of the denominator. So two and two gone. And that's why you end up at that particular level. And that's what you get for this particular question. So you wanna get rid of the denominator at all points, at all points. Wanna get rid of the denominator at all points. That's what you do, all right. So I think that's a hand that I've just probably answered. They just let me know if you're still struggling, but I wanna try my best to make sure that we uh, get all that we need. I'm gonna unmute the other one um, and go ahead, please. Hello, sir. Hi. Would you please explain the second step and furthermore, like downwards, going downwards? Okay, so the, this, the other one going downwards. Let me show you from basics. Yes. Let me try this, let me try this. Okay. If I say to you in maths, let's try simple maths. If I say to you x plus two over x is equal to 15, and I say solve for x. So what are we gonna do? Get rid of x. So cross multiply, get rid of the denominator rather, cross multiply by x. So I'm gonna multiply x times x plus two over x times x is equal to 15 times x. 
So this X and that one cancel. X times X is now X squared plus two X is equal to 15. Then mathematically you do the rest, then maybe try and solve for X. All I'm trying to do is to get rid of the denominator. By all means, get rid of it. Our question has something of that same effect as what I am doing now. You see, our question here has got the situation whereby you've got two dot three to the power of X, get rid of the denominator, multiply by two, plus three over X, uh, three to the power X over two, multiplied by two, get rid of the denominator, is equal to 15 over two, multiplied by two, get rid of the denominator, gone, 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 15 plus three to the power of X, then two times two times three to the power of X is four dot three to the power of X. Then the rest is just factoring out with three to the power of X and then solving for that specific situation. So by all means, when you've got a denominator, get rid of it. The sooner you do, the better. And usually we get rid of the denominator by cross multiplying everything by that denominator. Are we good? All right, thank you. There's another hand, one more hand, and then allow me to go to my next questions uh, on that one. Hi, sir. Go ahead, yes. Uh, sir, may I ask why, doesn't, why the two doesn't multiply the three to the power of x? Okay, perfect. All right, let me show you some math. Good question. I'll try to explain. Two times two times four. When you multiply, when you do this, what do you multiply? Do you say two times two? And then do you say two times four? You don't at all. You don't do that. But if I say it's two, and I say two X plus two as an example, then this two multiplies that, and this two multiplies that as well. So, so it's, 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 a, it's an issue of understanding that you are multiplying terms that are, on, uh, that are individual. Two times two times four is two times two, times three to the power of X. Two times two is four. So you don't say two times two, then you get four. And then you say two times three to the power of X. No, you don't. It's just two times two times three to the power of X, two times two, four. Just like while I'm trying to explain it on this side as well. So take cognizant of that particular situation, family. Very important that you get to understand that. So you're just multiplying individual entities. You're not saying one entity, and then the other one, just two times two times three to the power X. The same way you would tell me in maths, two times three times four, in this case is 24, because it's two times three, which is six, then six times four, which is now 24. Basically, that's how you'd put it across in whatever circumstance you may be having. Okay, guys, I'd like to move on. Thank you so much for the questions. I'd like to move on and go to my next question on that particular aspect. Here we go. All right, so we're trying our best to pull through. Here's something interesting. Here's something interesting. I'm gonna do two questions of this type, of this type, then do three more questions or two more questions, then we can end our session. Uh, it's been a lovely one. Here's a question two to the power two, two to the power two to the power X, or rather two to the power two X rather, plus six dot two to the power X is equal to 16. Let's see what comes up into our minds. Pretty much, we may want to say to ourselves, okay, let me break it down. So we do this and then plus six dot two to the power X is equal to 16. Maybe someone would think along those lines. Then they say two to the power X, okay, is common. Then now you're stuck. Now you're really stuck. Common errors with what you guys do. Some of you want to say, ah, no, but say it's solvable. I can always say two to the power X is equal to 16, then also this is equal to 16. No, no, no. You can only do that if this was equal to zero, only. That's the same thing that you do in quadratic equations. You don't solve any quadratic equation unless everything is equal to zero. So you can't say two to the power X equal to 16, and then this equal to 16, no. Only when it is equal to zero. So this method gets us stuck. Two to the power X 
dot two to the power x plus six dot two to the power x. What do I do? Where do I go? All right, let me explain. Very easy to understand. Now, there is two to the power x there and two to the power x there, they are multiplying. Then there's two to the power x there. Do some maths. Use the K method, all right? Say this, say let K, all right, all right, be two to the power x. K, make your life easy. So two to the power x is K, all right? Multiply it by another K, that gives me K squared. Plus six, okay, multiplied by K is equal to 16. Looks a bit uh, neater. K squared plus six K minus 16 is equal to zero. Okay, what can I do? I can factorize. It's a quadratic equation after all. I've equated it to zero. I can factorize plus eight minus two is equal to zero. K is equal to negative eight or K is equal to two. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're identifying relationships. We're identifying things that look common, that look the same and playing around with math. Two to the power X, two to the power X, two to the power X. There's two, two to the power X's. Let K be two to the power X. That becomes K times K. K squared plus six K is equal to 16. Then solve for K. But who is K? Well, K is two to the power X is equal to negative eight. Who is K? Two to the power X is equal to two. Then here X is equal to one. Bases are the same, drop the powers. I want to talk about this guy. Two to the power X is equal to negative eight. I wanna talk about him. Listen to me very carefully. You'll use this in this topic. You'll also use this in inequalities. Be careful. Two to the power X is equal to negative eight says the answer. And we need to solve it out. Can we? No. Haibo say, is it not possible to say, say, is it not possible to say minus two to the power three? Yeah. And the base is two here, I agree. But here is minus two. Oh. In fact, I want you to know that in math, there is no number for X that you can put that will ever give you a negative number. Two to the power of X is equal to negative eight is an impossibility. There is no value for X that you can put that will ever give you a negative number. Let's try it. Two to the power of negative three is one over, according to the law, to the power of three, which is one over eight. It's not negative eight. It's a positive one over eight. So, so I want you to learn this because it's important to understand, especially again, when we deal with inequalities. So in, in math, three to the power of X, I'm giving an example, less than zero is impossible. Less than zero means negative. You cannot put any number here and you end up with negative, impossible, impossible. Even if the value of X is negative, your answer will always remain positive. Three to the power of negative two is one over nine, a positive number. Three to the power of two is nine. So whether I put a power to the negative two or a power to the positive two, my answer is positive all the time. So it's an impossibility and we write non-applicable in this case, non-applicable right there. Let me unmute a couple of people who wanna ask questions. Go ahead. Evening, sir. How are you? Good on you, sir. Uh, can I ask a question? How do we come to the point of knowing whereby we have to use uh, the K method? Okay, good. How do you come uh, to a point where you know you're gonna use the K method, right? Yes. Very interesting. Let me pull through on that, right? Um, it's a matter of identifying, mostly, it's a matter of identifying what you have on your equation. For me, the, the key was noticing that I've got two to the power X there and two to the power X there, both of them on one part. And then also another two to the power X. Then I say, okay, I can't take out two to the power X, I'll get stuck. 
that if I make K is two to the power X, then I'm winning. So it's, it, you kind of like look at it this way. Look at this part, two to the power two X and two to the power uh, X. This two to the power two X is, written, is, is can be written like this. And then this two to the power X like that. So it looks like this guy is happening twice here and here is happening once. Twice there, here once, hence the K method right there would be more appropriate for me in this situation. Two to the power X, um, dot to the power X plus six dot to the power X, let K be that. So when you see it appearing twice, maybe on one side, that would be the best way to look at it. Now, I don't want you guys to memorize mathematics. I want you guys to be able to apply the skills that you need when you look at a question. And that's very important to get this right. All right, let me pull through on that one. Someone's got another question. Uh, thank you for that. I wanna move on to another question similar to this. Go ahead. I've unmuted. Try to go ahead. Hi, sir. What's happening? Uh, my question was based on the last question that we did, so I'm okay with this one. Okay, good. Oh, on the last question that we did. Oh. Yes. Okay. Um, let me quickly try and see. All right, maybe before we end the lesson, I'll, I'll go back. I think I know which question you're talking about. I want to move on to another one, uh, and maybe when I'm going on to the other ones, you will be able to get answered on all of that. Here's a question that's interesting on the board. There it is. Uh, three to the power or three, then x to the power two over five minus five, x to the power one over five minus two. All right, let's identify things. Let's see relationships. Let me help you. Now, notice something here, which is what um, the previous, previous um, uh, um, person who was questioning. I can write three, x to the power two over five like this if I want. If I want, I can, because that's correct, like that, very correct. I can write it like this. It's very correct. Because if you think about it, x to the power one over five, dot x to the power one over five, the base are the same. One over five plus one over five is two over five. I've written it like that. So look at it again. There's x to the power one over five, x to the power one over five, occurring. Okay, twice, then here is once, K method. So let K be X to the power one over five. So let K, then this becomes three K squared, K times K, all right? Minus five K looks a less clumsier is equal to zero. You can solve it using the quadratic formula to find your K, or you can just factorize nicely. And then when you factorize nicely, I think it becomes three K plus one, and then here, this becomes K minus two. All this is equal to zero. Again, family, you can use the quadratic formula if you want to. I don't prefer it. I prefer to factorize, all right? So there we are. It's factorized right now. But I'm looking for uh, X, right? I'm looking for an answer. I'm supposed to solve at the end of the day. So now this becomes 3K plus one is equal to zero. K becomes negative one over three. And on the flip side, K is equal to two. But who is K? Who is K? Well, it is X to the power of one over five, that's K. Now it's equal to negative one over three or X to the power one over five equal to two. I like this question because I wanna teach you something here, how to handle these guys. X to the power one over five is equal to negative one over three. Normally guys, if this was X squared is equal to four, it would be easy, would say square both sides. If it was X cubed is equal to four, would say cube both sides, but suddenly it's X to the power of one over five is equal to negative one over three. This can be written as uh, uh, X to the power one over five. Check my maths, I'm manipulating maths. To the power five over one, yo, what's happening? To the power one over five, to the power of is reciprocal. One over five reciprocated is five over one. Is equal to negative one over three. What you do on the left, you do on the right, that's still five over one. Why am I doing this? Why am I powering with the uh, 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 reciprocal of one over five? 
is because I learned that one over five times five over one can be multiplied and they give me one. And then here I've got negative one over three to the power five over one. So X to the power one day is equal to negative one over three to the power of five, which is negative one over 243 if you put it in the calculator. All I'm trying to do family is to get rid of the power one over five. How do I get rid of it? Power it with its reciprocal. Who's that? Five over one. Do the same on the right hand side, five over one. And five over one is five, by the way. I was just saying five over one, so you can know that I'm using the reciprocal all the time. I'll do the same here. I'm looking for X, it becomes two to the power five over one, or I can say two to the power of five. All right, let me write it properly. That becomes two to the power of five, which is basically 32 at the end of the day. So I want to get rid of the power. So you power it with its reciprocal. Get rid of the power. How do I do that? Power it with its reciprocal right there. Okay, let's try and do something else as well. We're about to finish this up here. Very important that you get that. Maybe let me just take it back just in case someone is still writing. I wanna do my last two or three questions and then we end it up. And I thank you guys for coming through. My last two or three questions, I ended up and I thank you guys for coming through. All right, gone, gone, gone. All right, let me try another question there. Uh, maybe let's try something like this. Okay, these ones here are very interesting right there. They're very interesting. Three to the power 2018 plus three to the power 2016 over three to the power 2017. Just a simple two marks. Let's do it together. Not difficult. Now, normally if you try to put this in the calculator, you might not get an answer. Maybe the calculator could say error. The numbers are too big. Three to the power 2018. My suggestion, my suggestion. Try to ensure that you deal with this from the smallest power. Let me show you something, family, on the side here. Now, if I say it's three to the power of five, I can write it as three to the power of three if I want, dot three to the power of two. That's still okay. I can. I can do that. And so I'm saying use the same idea here to be able to break down this thing to the smallest power. Check this out. The smallest power is three to the power is 2016. That's the smallest one. I can always say three to the power 2016 dot three to the power two. Uh -huh. 2018 can be written as three to the power 2016 dot three to the power two. Why say bases are the same? If you add 2016 plus two, you get 2018. Okay, to the smallest power. Plus three to the power 2016, that's our smallest power. We leave it like that. Over three to the power 2016, there, dot three to the power one. Okay, all right. At the top, what's common? Three to the power 2016. I'm taking it out. There we go. What do I have? Three squared plus one. Over three to the power 2016, dot three to the power of one. Check your maths. These ones, they cancel out. What am I left with at the top? Three squared plus one, which is 10, divided by three to the power one, which is three. Basically, two marks gives me 10 over three. 10 over three. So always get it to the smallest power all the time. Let's try another one, hey? Let's try another one. This was just two marks, so it wasn't much hectic. Always get it to the smallest power. Again, family, there are many ways of doing this. I want to say this again over and over again. There are many ways of doing this. Now, you can do it this way or other alternatives, right? But I think this one is easier, and I'll always try to teach you easy stuff to understand. Let's go to our next one. Let's go to our next one. We'll break it down together. Let me try something of the similar note on that. So here's a question now that we can try together. Three marks on this one. 2015, 2013, 1006. Those are the powers. Let's see. 
At the bottom there, I can change four to the base of two. All right, all right. To the power 1006, then two to the power 2015 plus two to the power 2013. So ensure that everyone is to the same base. All right, so at the bottom again, I noticed that this is two to the power 2012. I will say two times 1006, 2012. Then here, two to the power 2015 plus two to the power 2013. Who's the smallest power? 2012. Relate everything to 2012. So 2015 is two to the power 2012, two to the power three, plus two to the power 2012 on 2013 uh, to two to the power one over two to the power 2012. Factor out at the top, two to the power of 2012. What do I have? Two to the power of three. Okay, let me write it a bit closer. All right, two to the power of three plus two, all this over two to the power of 2012. Then finally, gone, gone. You're left with two to the power of three, which is eight plus two and evaluated without a calculator that leaves you with 10. Basically, that's that. So nothing hectic again, family, to the smallest power. Relate every single thing to the smallest power. Relate every single thing to the smallest power. Let's try our last question. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much. Let's try our last question. Let's see what we can get. All right. So I'm going to take this out right now to the smallest power. All right. Here's our last question. Something more interesting. Oh, okay. I think I've stopped sharing the screen. I think I've got to my last one there. Let me try and see. Uh, I wanted something very different from this because it doesn't come up with what I want. All right. So what I'm going to do now, guys, this probably would be my last one. Let me just leave it on this one here. I wanted something a bit more different from what I have here. Let me just leave it on that. But again, in essence, in essence, as I'm about to end, in essence, um, when you're doing AMA exponents, you just need to follow the rules and it's just to follow the laws. That's, that's all. Uh, notice your basis, look for relationships, find things that are, 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 are similar, they're common, things that look the same, uh, divide when you need to divide, multiply when you need to multiply, play around with it the best way possible and you end up getting what you need. Not a difficult topic, but it's part of your paper one. And I want to encourage you guys to make sure that when it gets to things to do with such questions, very important, because they are affecting what you guys will do now in exponents. In series and sequences, you use a bit of some exponents in there, particularly on the geometric series. You need to know exponents. There's what are called exponential graphs under the topic functions and graphs. So math is interrelated. You just don't do one thing in a vacuum. You will need it probably next time on other things over and over again. So that's basically been our lesson. It's our free lesson. And I hope you guys really got to understand all of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I put this on our on my YouTube channel, uh, maybe later on in the night today, maybe tomorrow latest, uh, and get you guys to actually watch this further. You can always rewind me always stop me and all that. And whoever's going to be watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. I want to grow it a bit bigger than what it is. I'm going to stop the recording now as we have it right now. Okay.